Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Will. I'm Brian. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from cold cantrips to clattering constructs, and today we're covering Copper Dragons. The Dungeon Cast. Hey Brian. Copper. Dragons. We're back again. Indeed. And we're talking about a metallic dragon this time. It's Kappa. It's still Year of the Dragon. It's It's been kind of a long Year of the Dragon, but I'm enjoying it. We're, aren't we like six or seven months into the Year of the Dragon now? Uh, Maybe I seven believe this will now? be eight months in. Did we start in January? We started in January with, yeah. Uh, yeah. what was it, Copper Dragons um, Part 2? Or not Copper, uh, Chromatic Dragons Part ah, 2. Ah, that's right. Okay. And then Metallic Dragons Part 2. And then we started in on the individual, and now we've covered six of them. We're sliding all the way to December with this one, baby. Indeed. Okay. So, Tell me about Copper Dragons, Will. Let's talk about Copper Dragons. So Copper Dragons are on the lower end of the power spectrum when it comes to dragons in general, and they're the second weakest of the major five metallic dragons. Okay. Uh, though they are generally good-natured creatures, um, they have a well-earned reputation for being notorious pranksters, tricksters, and jokesters. Ooh, um, that's annoying. Yeah, I think annoying would be the right adjective to use to describe Copper Dragons. I okay. Would, I would even say they, they a lot of times ride the line between um, chaotic good and chaotic neutral. <laughs> um, what they lack okay. in raw power, they make up for in wit, cleverness, and deceit. Um, also, it's to be noted that of all the five major metallic dragons, these dragons are the greediest. They okay. are the most avaricious, and um, they, they hoard... I wouldn't say the most gold, but they're the most hoarding of their gold. So they don't necessarily, they're greedy, but they, that doesn't mean they have the most stuff. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times when it comes to having the most stuff, it like, are you the most powerful thing around? Are you taking all the stuff? Like, that's going to get you the most stuff. It's just <laughs> the stuff that these guys have. They protect it a little more fiercely or a lot more fiercely than any other metallic dragon usually let's does. Let's turn it into a business podcast. Well, just tell me about how to get more stuff. Just tell me what <laughs> I need to do. you accrue things. <laughs> um, no, let's get back to Copper Dragons. Yeah, okay. So Copper Dragons. Uh, have a fairly striking appearance with scales of a deep, warm color of burnished copper tinged in places with blue or sometimes green, mostly blue, though. Um, its head has a shorter, smaller face with no beak, uh, which is unlike a lot of the other dragons we've talked about, which do have like a beak like snout. Right. Um, they have broad, prominent brow plates over their eyes that extend up into thick, flat, coppery horns. They have a set of they have sets of ridges and frills that extend back from their cheeks and lower jaw area. And layers of triangular spines pointing down from their chin. Copper dragons are also the first dragon that we're covering that has wings that are connected directly to its body from the shoulder all the way down to the tip of the tail. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, there's basically, there's three dragons that kind of have this thing and they're all metallic. It'd be uh, copper, brass, and gold. And... Um, it's kind of just this this huge membrane that's connected to their body all the way down rather mm -hmm. than extending out wings. Right. Now, uh, the wings on a copper are much more prominent towards the shoulder with a fairly like, severe tapering as it gets towards the tail, um, which gives the copper dragon a distinctive V-like shape or like yeah. bat-like shape. Or like super it's... buff shoulders. This is dragon <laughs> skipping leg day. Right. When viewed, when, when you're viewing it from below in flight, it looks like this, this big bat V, if you will. Like a bomber? Like a, I don't know. Like a, oh, I guess that would be the opposite. Right. Because the, the V, yeah. This would be okay. the V with the wings pointing forward. Up forward. Yeah, <laughs> this exactly. Is a, this is a, a B2 bomber driving backwards in the sky. <laughs> there we go. That. Okay. <laughs> um, also, coppers are notoriously good jumpers and climbers with thick, well-mustered thighs and shoulders. So, no, they're not, not skipping leg day. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> and they, <laughs> they're and doing they, both. They're doing both. And they exude a strong smell of stone. Okay. That's yeah. weird. Why? Because uh, they live in rocky areas mostly. Because I'm always rubbing on them rocks. <laughs> and most of these dragons exude a smell really related to the element that they tend to relate to. Like, you know, the red dragons, they smell like sulfur. And, right, yeah. Uh, we talked about blue dragons, they smell like petrichor mm -hmm. and, you know, so on and so forth. So copper dragons are gifted with a naturally cutting wit and refined sense of humor. They love a good joke, riddle, or story, uh, doubly so if they are the one telling it, um, which they're quite good at doing. Obviously, they're dragons. You know, dragons are going to be good at whatever it is they choose to do. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, because they are dragons, uh, they fail at just being chill about their talents. And instead, <laughs> they have a very overblown sense of pride and superiority for their cleverness. Yeah, okay. Um, a quick way to infuriate a copper dragon is to not laugh at its joke. I see. <laughs> roll to be. Roll or, to, or to fake laugh is probably worse. Roll to be chill. Roll to be chill. Auto fail. Indeed. 
<laughs> all dragons. All dragons. Uh, the dragons are the opposite of chill. It's true. Unless, unless they're a silver dragon. Then they're oh, silver dragons chill. are real chill. Yeah, Bahamut's true. not chill. Bahamut's pretty chill. Well, I think chill Bahamut's dude, pretty like, chill. Do you think he's like chill though? I think, isn't Bahamut like doing stuff? I mean, he's doing stuff. When I think chill, I just think nice person. Oh, okay. That's my I'm, definition I'm thinking of chill. like, you know, beanbag chair. You think you're like laid back. Almost apathetic, but in like a, a fun way. Uh, like yeah, in a f- <laughs> like maybe not apathetic, but more yeah, I think I, I was that's why I said in a fun way. Yeah, like, like what you're saying, this. basically what you're saying, but lazy. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, you're you're attributing laziness to the word chill. Chill, just, I guess I mean, so. Chill for me is more like uh, someone I can be comfortable around because they're so friendly and nice. Well, but. lazy is not the right word because like chill is more like you know you're. Your molecules are not vibrating as hard. Yeah, we could be very literal. It's like cold. <laughs> He's just a cold dragon. <laughs> I touch it. It's just like, ooh, I see. No, that's not. Yeah. So that being said, uh, copper dragons are notoriously gracious hosts. So long as you're laughing at the jokes. Right. Uh, they are happy and mirthful as a general rule. They're sociable, funny, uh, and entertaining. They delight in sharing their wit and charm with others and are particularly fond of those with a bit of wit and charm of their own to share back. Does your dinner host that you've you, you've been invited to like a fancy party, does mm-hmm. your dinner host smell like rocks? <laughs> That's your first clue. Does he get really pissed if you don't laugh at his jokes? Yeah, is he really mad at the unfunny stuff he says you're not laughing at? <laughs> is he mad about it? <laughs> Man, you would think, well, they, they probably don't hit many like, it's probably more on the you side than the them side if you don't think their jokes are funny, huh? Because they're, they're probably I, really good at they it. They probably are really good at it. And yeah, I would say that you probably have a shit sense of humor if you don't laugh at a copper dragon. So <laughs> if you're not joke. laughing at a copper dragon, if you're not laughing at you're this guy the guy that smells like rocks, that's your fault. Yeah, it's your fault. How dare you? <laughs> Get out of my house. I like you, copper dragons. <laughs> that's hilarious. So um, Copper dragons are in the YouTube comments, like arguing with the people that don't get along with how things went. Right, exactly. <laughs> okay, got it. So uh, again, they they're really fond of people who have a bit of wit and charm of their own. So uh-huh. uh, bards in particular are sought after guests for copper dragons. Um, they they are they Ooh, are even, they gonna like patron? Like, I was about to say they they'd even go as far as being willing to sponsor one wow. or to carve out an abode in its lair for one. If said bard is of course willing to regale the dragon with stories, riddles, and music um, to a copper dragon. This kind of companionship between someone of such refined sense of um, wit and and uh, talent, talent and com- and and not comedy, but I guess comedy, yeah, um, and performance, I guess, is a treasure in itself to be coveted. Yeah. So like that is part of their hoard in their mind. Kind uh, of. Yeah. This bard is in my hoard. You're in yeah, my hoard. Yeah. He's hoard adjacent. That's <laughs> for a, sure. I have a, a painting of you done to hang in the hoard as a representation. Exactly. So there's a, something physical. I definitely, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> I need a physical representation. Carve okay. a statue out of this dude. Like, I so, guess, make a mini out of it. Well, no, I think that's going a little too far because the copper dragons are really prideful. And they, no, he, they he makes like a, like a hero forge size mini. Oh, yeah. I could see that. <laughs> and this is you. It's got him on the table like you should be going. Going to this town. <laughs> I'll put your so, mini here. Though copper dragons are overall friendly uh, to good and neutral humanoids, um, they aren't as actively fascinated by or involved in the affairs of mortals the same way that, say, gold, silvers, or bronze dragons tend to be. Okay. Uh, in truth, they find most people dull and boring, save for the few more interesting, talented, and witty ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, still, few copper dragons can resist the urge to show off their talent for tricks <laughs> yeah. and wit, regardless of their audience. And there's just a gang of mortals around all the time. <laughs> yeah. Real easy. Real it's just hot. like, uh, if you're wandering through a copper dragon's territory, I mean, the copper's going to see you, and he's probably going to think, oh, this is probably just some schmuck, but I'm hilarious, and someone needs to hear my jokes. So. Yeah. And it's easy. I'm going to tell like, him anyways. This dude gets hungry like at least two times a day. I'm yeah. going to bait him with food. And if he <laughs> and if he or she does not like my joke, I will I will give them bad directions. Oh, dang. <laughs> I can see oh, yeah. That, they're going to play a prank on exactly. Him. They'll be like, oh, you're trying to get to Dunshire. Oh, yeah, it's totally uh, northwest of here. Oh, I wonder if they would. Th- this is the type of like persona that would meet an adventurer that's like not that smart. Mm-hmm. And they have something super rare on them, like an item of power or something like that. The mm-hmm. dragon would try to like trick them out of the possession of yeah, it. Yeah, I could see a copper doing that. They're not like silvers and golds or bronze. They they're not dedicated to good necessarily. Yeah, they're like this would be great in my hoard, and this guy doesn't know what and he's doing guy, with it. And this guy doesn't deserve it. Yeah, he <laughs> look can't, at him. He can't unlock this item's <laughs> true potential. Right. This noob. This exactly. noob. How old are you? Twenty nine. You noob. Okay. So uh, copper dragons love to be the center of attention, and though they greatly enjoy a bit of banter, competition, and some audience participation in their 
performance, they loathe being upstaged or outwitted. Uh, draconic pride being what it is. Okay. So again, they just can't be chill about it. Yeah. Uh, dragons, no chill. No chill. chill. Chills down to like one or zero. So dragons uh, like to make their dra- dragons, copper dragons like to make their homes in dry, rocky upland hills or in mountains and carve out their layers from narrow caves within their territory. So, again, we're back to why they smell like stone. Rock rubbin. Indeed. Rock rubbin, copper dragons. Um, mm-hmm. They use their high proficiency in magic to move and shape stone to further enhance their layer. Uh, they tend to construct sprawling, twisting underground mazes full of traps designed to be annoying, infuriating and confusing. Uh, for unwanted guests and uh, to protect their precious hordes. It's almost like this game had like dungeon design in mind when they were making. I know. The creatures. Right? It's like why it's do all these creatures like that. love dungeons so much? They love to make. <laughs> it's like all these creatures love to make dungeons. That's so convenient for As this game. Friend, if you're a an adventurer and you stumble into a dungeon, like you pretty much should know in canon of your own universe. Oh, something powerful and evil probably lives here. Who carved all these tunnels? <laughs> I don't I haven't seen a dwarf for days. Right. Okay. So it's fairly common for copper dragons to actually compete amongst each other to see who can design the most confusing layer layout. Uh, also, how do you test that? I mean, hey, Ben, come check out this shit I built. You got to come over to my lair, man. Yeah. I'm going to be inside. <laughs> go to this location. Yeah. Just, yeah, you could do it. So Maybe. Probably not. The, You're stupid. The, see you there. <laughs> The fun thing or the funny thing about Copper Dragon's layers is the labyrinth that they build itself is just a gigantic decoy. Um, Its entrance will be fairly obvious in in order to trap and repel the greedy and unwanted, uh, you know, out there in the world. But the Copper Dragon rarely spends any time within this layer at all. Instead, the Copper Dragon will have an extremely well-hidden secret back entrance that leads directly to a main entertaining chamber where the Copper Dragon actually lives and keeps its horde nearby. Um, now it is connected to the layer and like you can get to this place through the layer, but the layer is such a fucking pain in the ass that you're probably never going to get through it. He's probably, and there's this nice back door over here that no one else knows about. Yeah. He's probably like, Oh, the journey is the, <laughs> is the reward of the, right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, the reward was the friends we made along the way. I'll give you some coins. If you can make, <laughs> make it through this way, I'll see you there. Well, now, where are you going? Now, don't worry about it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> So um, this this entrance is a very personal entrance. Um, even if uh, good aligned creatures who know about the secret entrance attempt to enter enter or call the dragon's attention this way, it's considered to be extremely rude. <laughs> Please leave my secret entrance. Unless it's very are, important to me. <laughs> unless they're really close friends. I have an emotional connection with this entrance. You, you just you don't you just don't get it. You, you need just to leave. Don't get it. I have a maze out front. Go uh, there. Go there. You can get in that way. Um, so uh, because because of their chosen territory, copper dragons will at times find themselves uh, the neighbors of silver, red, and blue dragons. Um, silver spend as little time as they can manage uh, interacting with coppers, uh, finding them mostly annoying. Yeah. Um, blues and reds will, of course, attempt to drive out and or probably kill the copper dragons. Um, though completely outmatched, copper dragons see this threat from reds or blues as a challenge and will proceed to... To annoy, harass, and embarrass the evil dragons as much as they can get away with without getting killed. Oh my god, just outsmart them over and over <laughs> exactly. again. Exactly, just enrage. And you know with a red dragon, it's going to get pissed. Oh yeah, it's going to be destroying That's stuff. Be fucking hilarious. Staying a step ahead of that bad boy is not, can't be too hard for somebody on similar intellect. Yeah, indeed. And with that, let's take a short rest. Okay. <laughs> Copper dragons are super rad as hell. But do you know what else is super rad as hell? Getting your D&D characters illustrated by a crazy talented artist. Bubble Laser is a freelance artist on Fiverr.com who has been illustrating D&D characters professionally for two years, and she wants to draw your characters. Bubble Laser has illustrated official logos, podcast art, and board game art, but her passion lies in bringing nerdy people's D&D parties, NPCs, and player characters to life. With hundreds of characters drawn and a five-star rating on Fiverr, you can know your commissioned character will be well taken care of. So click the link in the description, look her up on Fiverr, or find her art page on Facebook or Instagram at Bubble Laser Art, and get your characters illustrated today. Hey everybody, welcome to the part of the episode we're not talking about the last thing we're talking about. We're talking about our love. It's platonic and strong. <laughs> right, Will? I mean, it's like John Lennon said, it's all you need. I guess. <laughs> I mean, they need the podcast too, to like feel, they need well, like what interaction. What is our podcast but one great uh, exercise of love? Uh, like from a macro point of view, that's exactly what it is. Okay, that's yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, 
love of <laughs> love of ears uh-huh. and the people that use them Indeed. to listen to this Indeed. and the love of the game. Anywho, what are we <laughs> what are we, do, what are we doing here in this? I short believe rest? we have uh, patrons are supposed to shout out. Okay. Oh yeah. Should I do that first? <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Okay. First. <laughs> um, let me just like make this super big so I can read it. Okay. 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 Everybody, get, uh, line up, everyone. Line up. Line up. All right. There's there. quite the line. All right. First in line. Who are you? Okay. Thank you, David Pascal. Thanks, David. Um, if you're getting a double, good for you. Uh, thank you, uh, Anthony. Thanks, Anthony. It's just Anthony. Um, let's see. Let's see here. Ooh, that one's hard. That one's hard to pronounce. What thank you, Apophisu. Thanks, Apophisu. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Cinderon. Thanks, Cinderon. Uh, thanks, thanks, Benjamin Diggy Dignan. Is that yeah. is that DM Diggy from the Discord? Thanks, man. DM Diggy, thank you, man. Thank you, man. It's DM Diggy in the house. I opened the pledge. Thank you, man. We appreciate all the all the work you do. Indeed. Um, thank you, Mike Wilkinson. Thanks, Mike. Um, thank you to all of you who have pledged your allegiance to the Dungeon Cast. <laughs> now we really do appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying your bonus content. There's lots of fun things to do in Patreon. Go check it out. The Dungeon Cast. Dot com or no we don't have a website we just have lots of websites associated with us yeah it's i think it's patreon.com patreon. slash, slash the dungeon, dungeon cast. cast if you want to get a hold of us you can email us at the dungeon cast at gmail.com we haven't said that in a while um and we want to thank everybody that's been working so hard in our discord mm-hmm. um all of thank our mods guys. thank you guys so much uh your your hard work is uh most appreciated and not uh taken for granted at all. i do not know what i would do without you guys indeed it's getting out of hand in there <laughs> thank you guys <laughs> um uh <laughs> let's talk about that thing Yes, yeah, so uh, as tell most, them about the thing, Will. <laughs> as most of you probably know, we are running a contest where we're giving away the book Descent into Avernus, which is coming out, uh, I think, uh, September tenth or something like that. Either way, we're giving away a copy, and the way that you enter this contest is by tweeting out a link to our show, Super Quest Saga. Not this show. A lot of people keep trying to do the Dungeon Cast. No, that's fine too. Not the Dungeon Cast. Like, but please do the other one, Super Quest Saga. Yeah, that's how you get into to the contest. We don't really promo super hard on that show, so we are doing it yeah. here. Honestly, the the contest is really, I think, working and spreading the word because our subscribers on that show are really going up. And I uh, thank you guys because that's exactly what we're going for. We really we're proud of the show. We are confident in the show, and the fans who have been fans of the show are really enjoying it. So we're just trying to spread the word. Yeah, it so, seems like it, it gets such a good response that like. It must be we must be doing something good there so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. please go check it out so uh again you're going to tweet out a link to the show super quest saga with the hashtag super quest uh and you can enter that one i believe you brian have a way of entering in this you can enter this contest again that's right two times two times one descent into avernus for one lucky person uh we're going to put you in a little bucket tied to the well and just lower you down in there <laughs> uh but you can go on to the dungeon cast instagram find the descent into avernus poster it's got like Zariel on it or something? Is that like an angel? Mm-hmm. So looks okay. And then um, uh, just go down there, tag two people, recommend Super Quest Saga to them. Indeed, That's and all you we do. will be drawing a name on September first. Yeah, we will. You tell them, Will. <laughs> and with that being said, let's get back to the show. Let's go back to the show. We have to go back, <laughs> we have to Marty. Go back. It's your kids. We have to go back to the show. <laughs> it's your kids, Marty. They're not listening to the Dungeon Cast. <laughs> Turned. Oh, holy shit, it's Doc Brown. He's in a flying train. What? Uh, never mind. <laughs> okay. uh, let's get back to Copper Dragons, Will. Do we okay. have things left to talk about? We do. We got a few things. Hell and then, yeah. And then we'll get to the stats and whatnot. I love um, these annoying big assholes. Yeah, they're they're pretty, pretty <laughs> annoying, but so I like the, them too. Are these depicted as like a green in color? Like sort of thing, you know, copper is what I think of. No, with, they're like, like a, a rich, style. a rich, uh, deep burnished copper. If you go to the beach and they have, uh, they have electrical poles like overhead. Mm-hmm. There, mm-hmm. There's copper wire up there, and it'll it'll turn green. It's dope. Right. No. No. With this, it's like a burnished copper, but there are tinges of blue, which I think is an homage to how copper does uh, oxidize. Okay. So Sweet. I think the same. They do the same thing with bronze dragons with green as well. So, can you clean the oxidization off of stuff? Yes, you can. Oh, should they clean the Statue of Liberty? Uh, probably that? not, because I think over time, like the surface will re-oxidize, and if you keep doing that, it'll degrade the it'll material. It'll just fucking yeah. erode if exactly. you do that. That's, okay. Yeah, exactly. Sweet. I mean, I'm not an expert in this, but that's what I imagine would exactly happen. Okay. So because Copper Dragons, uh, their chosen terrain crosses with that of Brass Dragons as well. Like we mentioned Silver, we mentioned uh, Red and Blue, but also Brass Dragons, which we've not talked about on the show, really. 
but we're about to a little bit. They're pretty similar. I mean, like they they are they have some similarities. Dragons um, be dragons, dragons and then be dragons. like you know, so slight differences. Again, their terrain cross paths with that of brass dragons, and both of these metallics are highly social. Um, brass and copper dragons have a tendency to form friendships or at least passing acquaintances. It's almost inevitable. They can't help but talk to each other. But these interactions of relationships do have a pretty high tendency to devolve into bitter rivalries. Um, both dragons are notable communicators, but while coppers are joke tellers, riddlers, and funny story sharers, brass dragons are gossipers, conversationalists for conversation's sake, and the like. There are a lot of small talk and a lot of like really, like they'll just talk and talk and talk and so talk. Brass and talk dragons and talk are and talk. in the other room talking shit about the copper dragons. They'll talk shit about anybody, but my point is like they just don't stop talking and they like to hear themselves talk. And so it's only a matter of time before the coppers. Constant joking or interrupting of the brass's long-winded and inane jabbering annoys the opposite party. Is oh, what I'm okay. Trying to get at. <laughs> so once insults or jabs uh, in the conversation start to fly, things will escalate really quickly until one dragon none too gently leaves, vowing revenge for such disrespect. Oh, damn. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're talking about like centuries-long wars of pranks and colorful insults and practical jokes between these two. Oh, geez. It's just okay. like they just don't get along and they're constantly hurling shit at the other. Oh, there's probably like, oh, man, generations of their their great grandfathers fucking got got into it at a tea party. And it's just never broken. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's you, never maybe. gotten smoothed out. I guess so. <laughs> now, this applies. This same kind of deal applies between two copper dragons if they're sharing territory. Because sure. Again, they don't remember. Copper dragons don't like being outstaged, and they like being the center of attention. So if you put two of those people in the same room, they're going to get along at first until they feel threatened. And then next thing you know, they're fucking enemies. They're having a social, emotional fight to the death. Indeed. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) So outside of courtship, copper dragons tend to avoid each other. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Totally. Uh, Which makes sense after what we just talked about. Uh, Courtship with copper dragons is an odd mix of tenderness. You're the best. No, you're the best. (laughs) No, wait, I'm the best. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so courtship with copper dragons is the strange mix of tenderness and outrageous humor. Okay. So coppers are attracted to mates who can make them laugh, which is normal because that's how humans work too. Um, these partnerships will only tend to last long enough to raise their brood, after which everyone goes their separate ways because no one can stand each other. <laughs> so At that is. point, they've all sat down to too many games of Monopoly. Indeed. There's been there's been rage and yeah. tears. And, and they've just, all heard each other's jokes one too many times. Yeah, man. They, yeah. they can't let go of that thing that kid did that one time. <laughs> it's just like, okay. That's hilarious. So <laughs> when, it comes, when it comes to diet, uh, coppers are known to eat most things. But they have a tendency to favor poisonous or venomous creatures. What the fuck? Which is pretty interesting. Their digestive systems are capable of handling almost any poison safely. And many copper dragons claim that a diet of regular venom sharpens their wit. <laughs> now, do you, do, does this person is this person entering your home smell like rocks? Did they ask you if you have any rat poison under the sink? <laughs> uh, uh, I need, you're going to need to check that boy. He's a copper dragon. Now, this is a bit of a stretch, but I think this might be a reference to the fact that in real life, copper is a very potent antimicrobial and antibacterial material. Oh, hey. Bacteria and microbes cannot survive contact with copper. Oh, shit. Um, a lot of people don't know that, so I thought that was a fun fact. And this might be, so make maybe the copper neutralizes the poison, even though coppers in real life don't neutralize poison. I still feel like there's some sort of connection there, but maybe I'm just... Maybe that's their, like, it. role in society to, like, the good that they play. They eat up all the poisons. So yeah, you, maybe. So you yeah. can't. They're pest control, for sure. They're just eating <laughs> rattlesnakes. Indeed. Okay. So coppers have an extremely standard preference when it comes to their hoard treasures, you know, gems or coins, etc. They're just... Real standard dragons. Okay. Yeah, you know, nothing special. Yeah, you know, with the with the blue dragons, I think it was specifically sapphires were like their shit, and with silvers they liked historical things, and bronze dragons liked war shit. Right. Coppers just like gold. I don't know. Fuck it. Is it worth something? I'll <laughs> yeah, take it. Exactly. <laughs> all those guys took all the cool shit. I'll just take whatever's left. Right. As, a, right. Ge- as a general rule, uh, coppers are nonviolent creatures. Mm. But when backed into a corner, they are notoriously tenacious, scrappy, and intelligent fighters. Uh, they prefer careful strategy and planning to brute force. You know, obviously, they're the weaker 
kind of one of the weaker kinds of dragons. They need an edge. <clears throat> they have the but they have the ability to punch above their weight class, if you will, uh, when dealing with mightier foes uh, because of their cleverness, because they're so smart and they can think ahead. It's not those powerful back legs that just like grasshopper <laughs> kick someone. Well, I mean, I'm sure they utilize those as well. OK, um, <laughs> still, though, uh, regardless of the situation, a perfect victory in the eyes of a copper dragon uh, comes from taunting and annoying a foe so thoroughly that they just give up. Okay. That's their that's their idea of a perfect win. <laughs> I'm just going to piss you off. <laughs> it's just the, please go SD off that cliff. <laughs> I'm going to just fly. Like uh, There's uh, a party with no range. They're just going to fly above them like you wish <laughs> over and over again. Yeah, seriously, I can see that. So any questions about Copper Dragons before we get into uh, their layer and regional effects and all that jazz? Uh, I'm actually really interested in like what the regional and layer stuff is. So. Yeah, me too, because I actually haven't read it, so I'm about oh. to. Oh, <laughs> we're, we're all here. We're all going through we're it together this, this together. time on the Dungeon Cast. Okay. Um, I'm sure uh, it'll begin to ring some bells once I start reading it. So, regional effects. A region containing a legendary copper dragon's lair is warped by the dragon's magic, which creates one or more of the following effects. Uh, first effect, magic carvings of the dragon's smiling visage can be seen worked into the stone terrain objects. Oh, my mile. God. Radius of the dragon's lair. That's amazing. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh Effect two. Welcome to Dragon Town. Yeah. Tiny Welcome to my house. Tiny, okay. be tiny beasts, such as rodents and birds, that are normally unable to speak, gain the magical ability to speak and understand Draconic while within a one mile uh, radius of the dragon's lair. These creatures speak well of the dragon, but can't divulge its whereabouts. That's fucking cool. Wow. I like that. That's really flavorful. And lastly, intelligent creatures within one mile of the dragon's lair are prone to fits of giggles. Uh, even <laughs> serious matters suddenly seem amusing. See, okay. that's not fair. That's not fair. Like, maybe your jokes aren't that great. If you're having that effect, though, like, your jokes only have to be subpar. Right, yeah. That's ridiculous. Uh, shit. Well, well Motherfucking Copper Dragon. That's in its its region, right? So, like, wherever yeah. it, it makes its home. So it could leave that area and not have that effect? Yeah, like, when it goes to, like, once they stand up in the town next door, like, it's it just it never does well. My charisma <laughs> infects the land. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about layer action. So, again, initiative 20 count. The dragon takes a layer action to cause one of the following effects. Um, only two here. I've noticed that the metallic dragons only get two effects, while the chromatics, which eh, makes sense, are more aggressive. They get three. Um, the dragon chooses a point on the ground that it can see within 120 feet of it. Stone spikes sprout from the ground in a 20 foot radius centered on that point. The effect is otherwise identical to the spike growth spell and lasts nice. until the dragon uses a, the, this layer action again or until the dragon dies. That's pretty handy. Yeah, yeah just slow movement down and stuff like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And I think you can even do some damage with that. And then the uh, second effect is the dragon chooses a 10 foot square area on the ground that it can see within 120 feet of it. The ground in that area turns into three foot deep mud. Now that, that there we go about slowing movement. Each creature on the ground in that area when the mud appears must succeed a DC 15 dexterity saving throw. That seems low for a dragon. DC 15, if you're fighting an ancient dragon, you're probably going to succeed at that. In the mud? In the okay. mud. Or sink into the mud and become restrained. A creature can take an action to attempt a DC 15 strength check, freeing itself or another creature within its reach and ending the restrained condition on a success. Moving one foot in the mud costs two feet of movement. On initiative count 20 on the next round, the mud hardens and the strength DC to work free increases to 20. That's pretty cool. I mean, like rolling, making, forcing your opponent to roll dice is good in yes, the sense that, like, true. the more dice you roll, the more opportunity there is to fail. This especially is true. when, like, succeeding that roll is, like, mostly just inconsequential. Like, I just burned one of your successes on something. Yeah, like, I mean, gonna have you, to if, move through if you're going to view it anyway. like, you know, I think a lot of people will view their dice like, oh, I rolled a crit on a roll that didn't matter. I've wasted my crit. Yeah. But that's not how probability works. <laughs> well, I mean, like, the more they're rolling the dice, like they could, they could like burn their. Yeah, they but could have used the crit. The reality is like when you play the game, you you could burn your crit on that instead of well, an attack. But that's the thing, like what you roll in any given time does not affect any other roll that you make. I suppose, yeah, yeah. Like I know it's really easy to view it like that, but statistically speaking. It, it, it doesn't work like that. But regardless, it presents an <laughs> opportunity for your opponent to fail. And the su True. succeeding it is in really just Yeah, if you succeed, you succeed, but if you fail, you know. Something bad happens. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, let's get to Ancient Copper Dragon uh, stats now. We're going to notice that there's quite a dip in power. But still quite powerful because, you know, they're a fucking dragon. So armor class 21, which is great, actually. Uh, strength 27, dex 12 
which is pretty low. Constitution, 25. Intelligence, 20. Wisdom, 17. Charisma, 19. So now we're, like, when we hit this level, power level of dragons, most of the stats are falling from the high teens to the low 20s versus, like, a red or a silver where everything's, like, from the mid-20s and up. Okay. So, like, they, they are just distinctly less powerful. Um, dark vision, blindsight, all that jazz. Uh, challenge rating, 21. Legendary resistance, which we've covered many times. That's the thing with dragon. If they fail a saving throw, they can choose to succeed instead, and they can do that three times a day. I think their last dragon episode, we talked about like flavoring the legendary actions a little differently, like per dragon. Right, right. Okay. It, well, we talk about reflavoring a lot of the dragons because again, they're just so identical with just differences in like uh, you know damage and 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 hit a bonus. Right. And then like oh yeah, and their breath is kind of different. Yeah, it's essentially all they're all the same monster with certain tweaks which is so lame to me just so so lame to me but anyways uh the bite is 2d10 plus 8 the claws 2d6 plus 8 and the tail attack is a 2d8 plus 8 they have frightful presence which all dragons have um their breath they have their two breaths because they are metallic dragons so they got that going for them and their first breath that everyone knows them for is their acid breath Dragon exhales an acid acid in a 90-foot line that is 10 feet wide. Um, each creature in the line must make a DC 22 dexterity save or take 14 D8 acid damage. Wow. My God. Um, and then they have a slowing breath, which, again, is their non-lethal breath. Uh, the dragon exhales a gas in a 90-foot cone. Each creature in the area must succeed DC 22 constitution saving throw. On a failed save, the creature can't use reactions. Its speed is halved, and it can't make more than one attack on its turn. Ooh, that's pretty brutal. Nice. In addition, the creature can use either an action or bonus action on its turn, but not both. Ooh. These effects last for a minute. Oh, God. The creature can repeat the same throw at the enemy of its turn. That's a really good. That's oh, yeah. a, that's you, debilitating as fuck. If you pop that early, yeah. you've locked, you've locked yeah. a couple of, of classes down. Yeah, at least for a turn or two, because yeah. it's like, okay, you can't move, basically. Uh, no reaction, so, you know, great. You can't, you know, opportunity attack or anything like that. Um, if you choose to make an attack... You don't get your extra attacks. You only get attack once, which at right. that level sucks because you should have like three or four. This is basically like Rex the Barbarian. Yeah, and then and you can't then bonus action and action, and then you right? can't bonus action and action. So, so like, if you catch it early, you're hot. Damn, you got a rage. Look at you, Copper Dragon, yeah. punching above your weight, just like I said. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, after Magic. The, yeah, after that is their inherent ability to change shape, which the metallics have, but the chromatics don't. And then legendary actions again. This is this was the thing I think we talked about it. Legendary actions, they're the same for every fucking dragon, and they're all relatively boring. You have detect, which is useful because invisibility is kind of a thing. So uh, detect makes it so the dragon can make a wisdom check for free, right? Um, so they can find Bilbo or whatever. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, then their tail attack, which is just an extra tail attack. It's like, how boring can you get? And then, uh, again, wing attack, which costs two points to do. And this one's interesting, but to me it's less interesting because every single dragon has it. And that's the uh, move where the dragon beats its wings. Each creature within 15 feet of the dragon must succeed on a DC 23 dexterity saving throw or take 2d6 plus 8 bludgeoning damage and be knocked prone. The dragon can then fly up to half its flying speed. So, again, for me, I just think the legendary action should be customized to each dragon. You know, work in their element. Um, work in their ability to cast magic. Yeah. Uh, you know, work in just work in like whatever their strength is. In the case of the copper dragon, it's being clever. So maybe some sort of like distracting thing or misleading thing or an illusion thing. Like while maybe with the dragon that's not like more brute strength, maybe like some sort of like trampling legendary action. You know, something along, along those lines. That's just my opinion though. Turn that mud thing they do into like it's poison feces. That's disgusting. Yeah, man. That's so fucking gross. <laughs> whatever, bro. Yeah, like, whatever works. That's flavor right there. <laughs> Indeed, that is it's true. It's disgusting, nasty It's gross flavor, flavor yeah. but it's flavor it's all flavor. the same. And with that being said, I think we can get ready for a long rest, unless you have any questions about Copper Dragon. It's like the hot ham water in Breath of the Wild. It's like, fuck, it's gross. But, you know, it's good. It's flavor. No, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, no, long, long rest time. All right. So uh, before we leave, we just want to share with you guys uh, our secondary channel, TDC Plays, where we hear the Dungeon Cast Center around play video games. And uh, if you are into that or interested in that, you should click the link in the description because we're having a lot of fun there. I think right now we're most of the way through uh, Legend of Zelda, the Wind Waker HD playthrough. We started a horror game called Darkwood. Um, I think you're still doing Mega Man. Uh, yeah, but I need to figure out how to do the how to record it right. 
Oh, oh, right. I can I can show you how. Yeah, just yeah, show me the settings and how, I'll get yeah. back to that. Because I remember I think, you were having a frame rate problem, right? Yeah, my tornado's not showing up. Yeah, you need to record it, I think, at either 24 or 30 frames per second. Yeah, I don't know anything about it, so yeah. Will does, and he's going to show me. Yeah. Um, I did finish editing um, the Majora's first two Mask. Majora's Mask drops, Sweet. so those cool. are done. Me and nice. Jake played Majora's Mask. It was pretty fun. I, I liked it. Nice. Um, the, Have you guys finished the game, actually? No, okay. but um, we're into... We're into like basically the intro is out of the way and that's going to be kind of rough. Um, like, well, it's 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 just long. That's all. Right. Yeah. That, well, I that, think a lot of people haven't played it before, so they'll be interested. Probably. It is a very like good looking game for its time. For oh, sure. definitely. Yeah. yeah. There's a yeah. lot of cool color palettes they're <laughs> using and stuff, and and we do. There's some fun. We get up to some antics, you know, within within the box of Zelda that we we put ourselves into. Anyway, yeah, that's going up this week. Cool. Um, and, and Smash Sundays, every Sunday, we're playing Smash Brothers. Yeah, so. when we can. We got and super busy. Yeah, we did get super busy, but it's coming back. As a matter of fact, we're going to record two episodes <laughs> today. <laughs> and uh, Oh, yeah, we are. And uh, we're getting better at the game, I think. I think I feel like I'm getting better at Smash Ultimate, so I'm excited to play today. It's uh, There's a lot of lot of changes going on in that game, so we'll, we'll go explore those probably. And, and with that being said, yeah, let's get out of here. Let's call it a game. I'm going to go to sleep now. Talk to you guys later. Dungeon Cast.